One of the challenges when working with virus disease problems in developing countries is to accurately diagnose the disease problem. For scientists in the U.S., it's very difficult to bring live samples from other countries for processing and detection because we have to go through regulatory channels in order to prevent any introduction of alien pathogens. So by the time we ship this live sample from a developing country and it arrives in my lab, this sample is almost dead or it's completely rotten. So there were many examples where medical scientists were using FTA core technologies for testing the blood samples for malaria and other problems in developing countries. So we thought we should use that kind of technology in our program. Now, the beauty of this technology is that once you spot the sample on this FTA cord, the nucleic acid is tightly bound, and if there is any pathogen in the sample, it's denatured, and it's no more infectious. And these cords can be transported at room temperature through regular mail. So it has the advantage of convenience, simplicity, and at the same time, maintaining accuracy and precision in terms of diagnosing a given virus. For example, in Nigeria, there was a disease in Swabi, and our collaborator spotted suspected samples on FTA cards and then shipped to us. And we were able to characterize that particular virus, and it turned out that there are two new viruses infecting soybean in Nigeria. FTA cord technology has not been widely used for plants. So I would consider this as a, a first time application on a wider scale, benefiting a broad range of institutions. In my lab, for example, a scientist from Indonesia, a scientist from Uzbekistan, from Uganda, from India, and from Guatemala, they come together and they exchange scientific knowledge. So that's a tremendous benefit, you know, in terms of WSU scientists facilitating these kind of programs for scientific exchange across the world.